Hello, my name is Julie Smith, and today I'm going to talk about the invasive weed Scotch broom. Scotch broom is in the order of the Fabellus and the family of the Fasacea. It's a pea in the pea or legumi family. The common names are Scotch broom, English broom, and Scotch broom combined. The identifying characteristics of scotch broom are the flower variations, seeds, root and stems, and the life cycle. The flower variations include cream and orange, see here, yellow, which is the most typical, yellow and red, and red with pink. The seeds, as you see here, the seed drawing, you can see this outer um, seed coating, which protects the seed. Um, and then here on the top left is a green and brown seed pod. One is mature, which is the bottom one, and the top one is an immature. And then here in this picture in the middle um, is a picture of the immature seed pod with these tiny little hairs along the margins. And the bottom left here is a mature seed pod that has popped open. And you can see the, the, all of the seeds there. And then here we have the root and stems. So here on the upper left is a picture of the root and you can see the long tap root there. It's like upside down and someone's holding it. Um, and then the bottom left, there's a picture of the stems with the leaves on them. And then this right hand picture here is a picture of the stems with, um, with no leaves on them. And they, their leaves fall off in the winter and they also can lose their leaves when they're under stress such as um, in freezes or extreme heat. Um, but what's interesting is the stems photosynthesize. So you can see here the scotch broom life cycle. It begins with the seeds in the seed bank here on the left and then it moves up to seedlings and then you have juveniles and then the plants mature into adults. Um, there is an additional cycle here which some scientists have um, brought to our attention. Um, when the plants are cut back extremely or burnt by fire, then they rejuvenalize and um, the cuttings can sprout seeds again. Um, and because the, the, the plant is a perennial, um, it spreads both, both vegetatively and by dispersing seeds, so it makes it very hardy. So species introduction. Um, when and where? So it's thought that the scotch broom plant was first introduced in the 1800s in North America and Hawaii. And in the 1850s, interesting story, a Scottish um, captain um, named Captain Walter Colloquin Grant, um, he was a contractor for the Hudson Bay Company as a surveyor. And he went over to Hawaii and really liked um, the scotch broom plant thought it was really pretty and so he brought it back to the Vancouver Island and propagated it. And at the same time it was being propagated in California. And then in the 1970s the British Columbia Ministry of Highways started planting it, um, I think just for its beauty. So the reason and mode of introduction were ornamental shrub. It's, it's as you can see, very beautiful. Um, fodder or food for sheep, erosion control, stabilizing dunes and slopes, and livestock fence or barrier. The invasive um, US range is um, the United States, the Eastern, some Eastern states and also Western states and um, some area in British Columbia. And then down below is the native range. You can see here in the picture and to the right, I've listed all of the countries that it's uh, native to. And worldwide, this is the global invasion range of um, this weed invasively. So it doesn't include the native ranges. This is just the invasive range. Um, the preferred habitat are open landscapes um, in cool temperate regions with coarse, dry to semi-moist soils with low fertility. 
Uh, it likes hillsides, pastures, fallow fields, roadsides and grasslands, riverbanks, dry riverbeds and degraded coastal dunes, as well as forest edges and clear cuts. So um, scotch broom does respond to disturbances um, when it's cut and the leaves and stems are destroyed, the roots regenerate. Some are killed, but um, they can regenerate. Freezing temperatures can kill the stems and leaves. And again, the, the um, roots can regenerate. Heat stress can harm the plant um, and they can lose their leaves, but the plant uh, stems photosynthesize. So um, they have this capability, it's interesting. Um, fire can destroy the stems and leaves, um, but the seeds are stimulated by fire and again, the roots can regenerate. So that's not always a, a good method. Um, digging or pulling the plants can cause ground disturbances and ground disturbances can um, stimulate seed germination. Um, biological attacks are really effective and they can help reduce the rate of spread as well as chemical herbicides. And um, it's debatable on the effects of climate change on this plant. Um, it may increase the risk of catastrophic disasters as heat increases and precipitation decreases. So the life history survival strategies of this plant. So we talked about it being a perennial shrub. So it's vegetative and it can spread by seed. Um, the plant can produce up to 15,000 seeds annually in the non-native environment. In native environments, it's only about 9,000. The seeds can survive up to 30 years and in some seed banks, 80 years. The plant spreads rapidly and densely anywhere there is sun. Seeds are germinated, as we talked about, they're um, stimulated by fire and the plants can sprout from the taproot crown after cutting or freezing and sometimes fire. Also, the plant um, hosts nitrogen fixing bacteria in the roots, which assists both its establishment on poor and disturbed sites and its ability to outcompete native species. So here on the bottom left, you can see the seeds and the outer coating there. The major impacts are to human health, ecological, and economic. Um, scotch broom can cause allergies in humans, and it can result in headaches, breathing difficulties, burning eyes, up for two, up for two months of um, the blooming season of the plant. The plant is toxic to grazing animals and humans. Um, they don't really like it, um, and it can cause digestive disorders in horses. The seeds um, and flowers contain a toxic alkaloid. And scotch broom is a fire hazard. Um, it's highly flammable with high oil content. Uh, large dead or dry stands increase wildfire fuel loads, thereby escalating wildfire intensity, ladder fuel, uh, they're also a ladder fuel, allowing the fire to reach the tree canopy. Scotch broom forms really thick, dense, thick, um, dense thickets, and they can crowd out native plants and animals, um, and those animals can't get in to forage or eat, such as quail or deer. And then their dense, dense spreading can lead to dramatic loss of diversity in plants and animals and it slows and prevents forest regrowth and can make farmland useless. The economic impacts seen in Oregon and Washington states are about $47 million in Oregon and $142.8 million and 660 jobs annually in Washington. So it's significant. So I thought this picture was kind of fun. Um, control and eradication. Uh, what they have here are weed pulling wrenches, which um, don't always work, but um, can help with some of the stubborn roots. So re we're gonna talk about removal, prevention, detection and monitoring, climate change, laws and regulations. So the main um, way to remove is just by pulling. So you can hand pull, you can use the weed puller, you can cut or disc the plants, and you wanna do that in the springtime when the ground is moist. Um, and what's been most effective is volunteer work parties. 
private landowners can pay landscapers to remove them. And there's also um, on military bases, they may have a crew that can go in and, and um, eradicate the plant or kind of keep up with its growth. Um, prescribed burns can be can be helpful, but they have to be managed. And then um, you have to go back in and get rid of the sprouts. Also intentional and unintentional biological introduction can help um, with the removal or um, reduce the spread as far as like seed germination. So here is prevention techniques. Public awareness and reporting is huge. So um, if the public knows about it um, and they can report a sighting, um, it can stop some of the online sales. This, this seeds and the plants are still sold online and readily available. Um, mechanical pulling can help the spread, preventing soil disturbances when you're pulling um, and planting competitive shrubbery. Um, also goats and chicken after burns can help. So chickens can eat the seeds and goats like the tiny little tender um, new growth on there. Chemical herbicides can be used um, on new growth. And again, we said um, intentional and unintentional biological controls. So there's insects, mites, and uh, funguses that can attack the plant or their seeds. So early detection, um, states have um, really done huge marketing campaigns here. You can see in the upper left, it's the Washington State Noxious Weed Control Board um, has a little logo. And they also have a reporting site for scotch broom and other invasive plants and animals um, on their website. And you can report a sighting um, and they have, um, California has invasive species cards and multiple states have fact sheets um, for invasive species. Also, there's volunteer organizations that can help with early, early detection and monitoring, specialists in the field, um, and as far as the reporting, they have ratings and watch lists. So which, which plants are, you know, highly, highly invasive. They, they really track and then they can initiate action. So response to climate change. Um, in 2010, they, um, the US Forest Service required forest management plans, um, climate change plans. And, um, what they found is they're concerned with how climate change is going to um, increase fire, drought, and possible insect invasion increase. And they're doing multiple studies and models of invasive species and their habitat and climate tolerances. Um, it's, it's really unknown what the future is going to hold um, for this invasive species and climate change. And they're, they're really not sure which direction um, the plant is going to um, go into. But based on its um, life history characteristics and its susceptibility to fire, um, I don't think it's, it's going to help. Um, eradication, long-term control and management. Uh, complete eradication may not be possible or even uh, it's it's incredibly costly and um, takes a huge amount of manpower and that may be impossible. Um, grants and funding can help with research and removal and continue prevention, early detection, monitoring and removal. Um, there, this plant is considered a noxious weed under the quarantine list in 46 states. And um, it's not listed as a federal noxious weed, um, but there is information about it on the US Department of Ag website, which you can see here um, that I've taken a screen capture of. Um, and when it's on the quarantine list in a state, it prohibits the transportation of the plant, buying, selling, offering for sale, and or distribu distribution of the plant, plant parts, seeds, seed blends or wildflower mixes. So I just want to tell you thank you for watching my presentation and if you'd like any more information please click the link below and read my report and you can also look for more information on the works cited. Thank you.